Hey, love bugs. This is Rosalind back at you one more again. I hope everybody is doing blessed today. I'm doing blessed and highly favored and hope the same for you. And if this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome, namaste, love and blessings, love and light, and many blessings are yet to come for you. And thank you so much for the love and support and coming to check out my channel. And if you have not already, please like and subscribe, even hit that notification bell so you know when I'm about to upload my next video. And if you even feel comfortable and even want to drop a line or even tell me about your experience or even drop an opinion on something that you might, you know, want to let me know about that I might not even know about, that would greatly be appreciated. I love to get the positive feedback. And if you feel like you resonate with my video, welcome to share. Even give me a thumbs up. It'll greatly be appreciated. And thank you once again for coming to check out my channel and show me your love and support. And from our returning subs, as always, what is up, fam? Much love to you. Many blessings, namaste, love and light, and many blessings are yet to come for you. As always, thank you for the love and support. And coming to see what I'm, I'm about today. Today, my video is about Twin Flame 101. If you're a Hayoka, how is it in the workplace? Today, I'm listening to Deep Sleep. Healing before sleep, get to sleep fast, easy, deep, deepest healings is very, you know, monotone, not really monotone, but, you know, mellowed out. And it's just like clear thoughts or whatever. That, that's kind of, I think that's kind of nice to go to sleep, but that's not, I'm not going to use this too long because I don't need to be sleepy while I'm trying to do my video. So I'm trying to give y'all live, positive, loving vibes. I'm not trying to give y'all, hold on just a minute. You know, I'm not trying to do that. So, but anyways, Hayoka is in the workplace, or empaths in the workplace, or indigos in the workplace, or even twin flames in the workplace. How are you in the workplace? Because I notice when it comes to indigos and empaths, especially with Hayoka, you already know we're backwards, class clown. And it's just like, it seems like to me, and this could be just my opinion. You can let me know if I'm wrong or not. You know, like I said, drop your statement. But I feel like when it comes to empaths, and I'm not trying to say this in an arrogant way or look beneath anybody because I feel like we're all equal regardless on, you know, uh, bank statuses or whatever. We're all the same because once we die, we can't take none of that stuff with us. So it's not, that's not what I'm talking about. So I don't want nobody to misconstrue what I say. Um... It's, it's just the way that we do things. We should have our own businesses. We should be that natural born leader. Like we weren't actually born to follow. You know what I'm saying? Follow the squad. Like, oh, somebody tells you, oh, I don't like this person. You know, I need you to not like that person. I've always been that type, even when I was in school, especially being the new kid or whatever. You know, there's sometimes if you're with the popular crowd and you attract the popular crowd, you know, they're going to always tell you, oh, don't like this one because of this and this and that. And you, and you know, whatever. You know, you have to deal with that on the workplace, too. And it just seems like since I was in an already in the South, I don't know what it is, but I've always, you know, I've always had issues with jobs. I always had issues with jobs. And I'm, I'm a very hard worker. I've been working since I was 15 years old, basically 14, because I started babysitting and stuff like that at that time. So I started working very early. But, you know, I had no choice around 16 because I have my daughter. So um, we're having a workplace. <laughs> in the workplace, you know, it could be the bosses. I've had so many bosses that think they know everything. And I understand they're bosses. You know what I'm saying? So they're supposed to be there to teach us stuff. But then it just seems like with me, I've always had those bosses. Not all bosses are like that because I've had some real cool bosses I was really laid back with that I really do miss. But you have those bosses that think they know everything. Or they try to, try to make you jealous of the things that they have or you know, be snide remark with you or whatever. Or, you know, when you're always the new person in there, sometimes you can get those jobs where they see if they're trying to try you or if they can be the bully. Because it just so happened, the first big job I actually got in the South was like working for the military government cooking because I used to love cooking. I still do love cooking, but I've done it for like 10 or 15 years back when I was in the Midwest. Well, actually, not even 10 years. 
but uh, it was close to 10 years, and then I turned around and did it here for about, almost about three or four. So it was just so hard here. <laughs> and then it was just like where I was put at. They tried to tell me that was the nice building, but you know, a, a certain family member got me that job. So I kind of think that was a setup for me to see how long I would last. They were like, oh, this is the best building. I mean, it was like Mean Girls times 20 in the hood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was just already crazy for me. So it just always seemed like, you know, I even tell my, you know, the people that I still talk to, it's just like, I could be the nicest person on the job. And I, you know, I, I socialize with a lot of people. And it's not like, you know, oh, I'm being fake with this person, but it just seems like, you know, the, the certain people gravitate towards me. And I never had to be that type of female that had to go out my way to get attention like that. It's like, you know, it's just when empaths like that, we always stick out anyway. So it's like, since I moved to the South, I've had to work around a lot of females. And it's sad, even though we're all, you know, our black culture, we're all black. But it just seems like since I moved to the South, they have issues. Dark, some dark skinned females, and I'm not saying all, but there are certain the ones that I, I have met some of them because i have some skin with uh friends with beautiful you know that beautiful chocolate skin i think black is very be beautiful to me but it just seems like the jobs that i have gotten to where it has certain you know it, it, it could even go off a of complexion and it's sad that people do that it's like body shame and going through different things at the workforce is like he say she say or you know I even had a close friend that got me a job and then, you know, got me fired because it was just the fact is I got along with everybody and I, I guess I stole the shine from her because she was used to being the only one and it was that bad. So I was just like, God dog, am I supposed to be here? And it's just like when I was doing a lot of um, research on Hayokas, it's just like, or and it could be any kind of empath or any kind of spiritual light worker. We come across people, and it could be in the workforce or whatever. I want to know, is it just me? Or have you been at a job that attracts a lot of, like, negative folks that come at you? Like, you're trying to figure out why is there certain jobs I can't get a break on, or I'm the new person, and they're coming at me. You know, sometimes it could be, the, you know, it could be you. But if you know if you come correct and you're being very professional and, you know, you're not trying to tell your, you know, your house business because, you know, sometimes people, you know, get, try to get into your personal business just to try to figure you out. But have you ever had issues where you go to a job where you are constantly bumping heads with the employees or, or you're get, getting into it with the, the bosses or especially if you got one of those bosses that are buddy buddy with the daggone employees to try to sit up here and you know, set up some stuff. I, it's like since I've been here down in the south, we talk about I've seen some stuff, and I'm just like, do y'all really do it like that? That here, you know, you would think it wouldn't even be that bad, you know, where I was living at in the Midwest, and it was just like a melting pot there, you know, and it was so used to, you know, when you're so used to a certain. You know, I'm not trying to step past, the, you know, black or white or whatever. But when you're so, when you're black and you're so used to a white person coming at you with a racist slur or whatever, that's something common. But it's bad. You know, we already got gang on black on black crimes. But it's bad when it comes to sisters. You know, I find sisters in many different shades, colors, and nationalities. But us as women, it's sad when you put other other women down you should be able to build each other up that's especially with anybody you should be able to build each other up you know nobody's in competition with nobody because everybody is have just different, different blessings and different journeys and it's hard sometimes it, it's just like when it comes to us we realize that but it's sad when the other ones don't realize that and there's some of us that are indigos and empaths and stuff like that going through jealousy of certain things because i've caught myself doing it you know, I, I said, like I said, I'm honest and humble about the things that I tell you. You know, I try to push out as much love and light, but I have no filter. I keep it real. I'm not going to try to say that I'm walking around on roses every day because there's days that, you know, I feel like my head's about to do 360 and, you know, say some kind of Sumerian stuff sometimes. You know, it gets like that. 
But I was just wondering, you know, when it comes to us working, you know, it, it, it's just like with me, I have never, since my experience on being in the South, I've had a lot of experiences here. I've had good experience, but I also had a lot of bad experience. And it's been bad because it was a lot of black on black hatred. Like when I first got here, since, you know, my family's military, we've been all over the world. So it's just like they always ask, where are you from? <laughs> where are you from? You have a different accent. And it's just like, it, it just depends on where I'm at or who I'm talking to. And it's like, not that I'm trying to fake an accent or anything like that, but it, it's just like when I'm, you know, when I was, you know, in the East, you know, not in the East Coast, but in the Midwest, I had a lot of friends that were Puerto Rican, Dominican, Panamanian, Cape Verdean, you know, all the, you know, all weird mixtures. So it's just like, and most of them migrated from either Jersey or New York. And, you know, I got a lot of family down that way, plus Minnesota and all that stuff. So it's just like, I picked up on everybody and it just melted into one. So, it, it, you know, and it's just like when I first started working here, a lot of people, even my, my children had issues with that because we didn't talk. We didn't have, uh, I don't know what word you want to use for it, but we didn't, they said we didn't talk black enough. And I, I'm just like, how do you talk black? It's either you talk, I, you know, I've always detested, I'm not going to use the word hate, but I always detest it when people say, you're, if you're white, you don't talk white enough. Because I, I have little girls in my neighborhood that, when I, I mean, I have to do a double take because it could be a little white girl that has just grew up. It's just, you know, your surroundings. And it's not like, you know, it's not like cast me outside or that other, the other one that just, you know, she's living good, but she want to act black. It's not like that, but it's just her upbringing. You know, it's just, I know this little girl, she's so sweet, but the way you, you, you know, she talks, you would turn around, you would not like wait a minute, hold up, where's the little black girl who's talking, but she didn't talk, you know, she, you would think she was one of, you know, one of the black, black people, whatever you want to call it, but it was not nothing like that, but so I don't want nobody to think I was being racist or I was trying to make a derogatory term towards anybody with different ethnicity, so I don't want nobody to get offensive off what I'm saying, but it's just like I said, it's, you know, working in the workforce, and it's like, especially since I've been down here in the South, I've really had a culture shock, because I lived here before, but it was just, I was too young to actually really work, but since I've been working here, and it's just like sad, when some people come across my YouTube page, or they come past my Facebook page, and I just don't happen to work with them, and I try to keep my Facebook private unless you go on my, you know, my YouTube or whatever. And I said when uh, I started my, open my, the new page up, I want to go ahead and take off my personal page because, you know, with my family and everything, I just want to keep that kind of private. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, refer everybody to that page if you want to go ahead and join that and, you know, talk to me or whatever. So it's just like since I've been down here, it's really been a big culture shock to me. But uh, I met a lot of beautiful people here, you know, this very sweet and everything like that. But it's just like since I've been working here, I mean, <laughs> I, I had to shake my head on a lot of things that I never really had to deal with before because it's just like people will be mean because of how you talk or how you look like I wasn't light enough or I wasn't dark enough or I didn't talk black enough or you know I can say a certain word they didn't know what I was saying or they can say something to me and I didn't know what they were saying so it's just like and then I worked for places that I just loved and adored you know came across people that just really touched my heart and that I still keep in touch with but you know I'm just wondering is it an average thing because I know people are just like you know especially family members like girl you can never keep a job or you always cussing somebody out because I've always been that type of person I'm not really a rowdy person but it just comes across to me it's like if I was the employer and I know you can't go off of what just because of something you do that somebody else would do but it, it's just to me it's how you talk to people it's you know 
you can catch more bees, you know, you can catch more bees with honey other than vinegar. And so a lot of them will talk to you crazy. So I was just trying to figure out, is it just the indigos or is it just, I mean, not indigos, but the hayokas, you know, we are do things backwards or whatever. We always attract things like that. And I'm just wondering, do you ever have issues on your job to where you have what I was telling you about? And I did not realize I've been talking for 15 minutes. So I'm not trying to hold you up tonight. That is the longest video I've did in a while. So I will talk to y'all later. I'm going to go ahead and flip over and do another subject. So I hope, you know, you guys were able to uh, get in, you know, get something out of that. And, you know, wondering, do you have that issue too? So just go ahead and drop me a comment and let me know what you think about that. And I will talk to you later. Like, subscribe, drop drop a line or two, share, give me a thumbs up, and I will see you later. Peace. Be wild.